Hello everyone, my name is Xiang Zhang. Today, I would like to present my master's thesis at Aalto University. This project is conducted in cooperation with the Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Department at ABB. The topic is called Diagnostic and Prognostic Analysis Optimization of Field Problems for EV Charging Stations. Let's get started. First of all, I would like to show how this presentation is organized. First, I will be talking about the problem definition to elaborate the background information, the current limitations, and to identify the research questions for this thesis. Then I will briefly introduce the EV charger system to get an overview of what high-level components are included in the charger system. Subsequently, I'm going to talk about the method that we are using in this project. After that, I will be talking about the implementation details to show how we approach to the solution step by step and uh, what kind of experiment we did. Then I will evaluate the implementation result based on different angles. Moreover, I will be discussing the results that we've got and include the, re the recommendation for further research. Finally, I will draw conclusions. So first, let's look at the problem definition. As transportation is one of the most polluting sectors in our daily life, electric vehicles are largely promoted to reduce greenhouse emission and the fuel consumption to protect our environment. The increase of the electric vehicles on the roads raises a demand for the EV charging stations. It is not avoidable that a fault happens on the EV charger or the hardware component of the EV charger degrades during utilization. Therefore, EV chargers need to be serviced to guarantee continuously delivering electricity to EVs. However, Service engineers can only handle a few charger problem every day, which causes a long downtime for EV chargers. In addition, in such a complex system, it is quite challenging to accurately locate the cause of the faults. Thus, an intelligent diagnostic and prognostic system for EV chargers is highly desired. To talk about an intelligent system, we think about machine learning as it uh, already has been widely used in various fields with its high performance. Thus, here comes with our main research question. To what extent can machine learning help diagnosis and prognosis of EV charges? To approach the research question, we divide it into four steps to achieve it. First, we will research and identify what available sensor data can be utilized to reflect the condition of the chargers. Then we will address how to expose the sensor data from the ch chargers and how to translate this data into meaningful data sets. Finally, we will pre-process them in order to feed into a machine learning framework to measure the effectiveness and the performance of machine learning strategy. To identify what sensor data are available to reflect charger conditions, we need to have an overview of an EV charger. The figure depicts an example system consists of three power cabinets and two charger posts. The power cabinets receive AC power from AC grids and convert it to the DC power. The charger post is the interface with cars allowing user to charge his or her vehicle. The charger post controls the power cabinet to get the power requested by the user. The power cabinet and the charger post are connected by canvas and also they are equipped with an interlock loop for protection. A charger system consists of five main boards with a CPU. All these boards are, are connected via the control bus which provides functional communication between them. The, the five main boards are CPI, IMI, CCB, Power Module, and SIC. CPI stands for Charging Protocol Interface, which is a component responsible for EV connection detection and the communication. The isolation monitor interrupter is a controlled by CPI for circuitry protection. The core connection board is in charge of the safety of the cabinet and the control bus distribution. The function of a power module is to supply the desired voltage and current towards the outlet according to the EV's request. 
The supply equipment control is used for interaction with the user via human machine interface devices and is responsible for system control of HMI devices. Then, I will explain the method we are using in this project. Regarding the data acquisition part, we use a can logger to sniff the canvas message and save them into a TXT file. There are two types of the communication mechanism for Canvas, namely service data objects, SDO, and the process data objects, PDO. The SDO communication has a restriction that it can only allow accessing one object dictionary at a time, which can cause a lot of overhead for accessing the data that changes continuously. The PDO protocol is used for process real-time data in various nodes, such as sensors and voltmeters, which is more suitable for our situation. The data transferred by PDO is 8 bytes for each node at the time point. The example message is like this, which contains the time step at FC to indicate its communication mechanism. P1T represents PDO transmit. A note indicates uh, uh, from which board the message comes. Can dash DLC means uh, can data length code, which is always eight in our case. And the last part is uh, eight byte data in the hexadecimal format. According to the design document of ABB, we can develop a Python script using regex to parse the data. After gathering all the possible data from the canvas, we formulate the post problem as a machine learning problem. We define a data point as a charging station of an EV charger. According to the information we can extract from the canvas, we can define five features for a data point. The charging current, the charging voltage, the fault resistance, the board humidity, and the board temperature. Then we will give every data point a label based on the information extracted from the stop reason of each charging station with manual checking. To feed the collected data into the machine learning algorithm, we require to pre-process the data beforehand. In addition, all data should be appropriately normalized to make the algorithm hardware and software agnostic. According to the CANBUS message, we can parse it and process it to obtain the maximum, the minimum, and the average value of each feature value. Our intention is to utilize the three values of each feature to normalize each feature within the range of zero to one by keeping its characteristics. Thus, we decide to employ different normalization methods dependent on specific features. The different methods with respect to specific features are shown in a table. DB scan, density-based spatial clustering of applications with noise, is a density-based clustering algorithm. This algorithm divides the area that has sufficient density into clusters and finds cluster of for arbitrary shifts in the noise spatial database. It defines the cluster as the maximum set of points connected by density. We define epsilon as a parameter specifying the radius of a neighborhood with respect to some points, considering there is a data space comprising of multiple data points. Mean points indicate that at least a certain amount of points are within a distance of epsilon of a point. DBSCAN algorithm divides the data points into three categories, the core points, the border points, and the noise points which can be seen in this graph. There are three types of conditions that can form a cluster. The figure illustrates the principle of cluster formation in dbscan. In this diagram, we set main points to be four. All the red dots are core points, since there are at least four points, including the core point itself, within their radius epsilon. It is obvious that they are density reachable from each other such that they form a single cluster. Point B and C are not core points, but we can notice that they are within the radius epsilon of the points that are reachable from point A. Therefore, they are also part of the cluster formed by point A, and they are densely connected. 
Point N is a noise point since it is not reachable by point A via any types of condition. The implementation primarily involves three main phases, parsing and pre-processing data from Canvas, construction of DB scan framework, and the fault detection analysis. The related workflow of the implementation is depicted in the figure on the, our right. First, we got Canvas message from the Canvas, and we developed the Python script to interpret Canvas messages. Based on the information we got, we selected several features that can be used for machine learning. Then we normalized the data in such a way to make it software and hardware agnostic. After that, we constructed the dbscan framework. Finally, we put our pre-processed dataset into the dbscan framework to implement the fault detection. Before the construction of the dbscan framework, we first implement principal component analysis. PCA uses singular value decomposition of the data to project it to a lower dimensional space. The purpose of PCA is to reduce the dimensionality of a data set while keeping the loss of information as minimum as possible. The intention of using PCA is because of the reduced performance of dbscan in a high dimensional data set. Thus, we expect the data set can be converted into a low dimensionality while retaining its original information as much as possible. To implement this, we draw a graph that shows the variance ratio against the number of features. We can notice that choosing only four features by using PCA can achieve nearly 100% of the original information. Therefore, we utilize PCA to convert the dimensionality of our dataset into a new dataset with a dimensionality of 4. To investigate the performance of the dbscan algorithm towards our dataset, we select five metrics to implement evaluation by comparing the output labels with the predefined labels. The RAND index calculates the percentage of correct decision made by the algorithm. The formula is shown here where TP is the number of true positives, TN is the number of true negatives, FN is the number of false negatives, FP is the number of false positives. In addition, we use precision and recall as evaluation matrix. As our application is more tolerant to false positives, we calculate F2 values to give more weight to recall. Considering that the true negatives are not evaluated, we choose specificity as another matrix for evaluation. The mathematical expression is shown as here. To explore the influence of the parameter of the dbscan algorithm, we fine tune the value of epsilon and the main points to discover which combination is the most suitable for our dataset. The chosen parameter combination are described in a table on our right. In our case, some similar faults happened several times are categorized into a cluster. Thus, not all clusters are healthy charging stations cluster. The total number of clusters are shown in the table, while the number of healthy charging stations clusters is included in a bracket. All the noise points are considered as fault points. In a table, with parameter epsilon equals to 0.1, and the main point equals 8, it results into four clusters of which three are healthy charging stations cluster. Furthermore, 17 noise points do not belong to the fourth cluster that happened frequently, and they are also considered at fourth points. The influence on the clustering result by varying parameters is also shown in the table. In the evaluation results, we can see that the all results with different parameters combinations give a high recall rate, and most of them are 100%. The precession is not very high, especially with reduced uh, epsilon and with higher value of main points. Also, the specificity is not high because these two combinations cause relative more false positives. However, we are more interested in the recall rate. The F2 score is also acceptable. We can notice that with epsilon equals 0.1, mean points equals 8, 
and the epsilon equals 0 0.1, mean point equals to 4, the performance is the best with all metrics. As we are more concerned about the recall rate, all the results demonstrate a high value of the recall rate. In addition, the overall accuracy and F2 score of all experiments are acceptable. The presented results from the experiment verify that our proposed approach is valid. Still, there are various venues for future work. The first is to obtain a larger data set with more types of EV chargers. By executing this, we can verify whether the proposed approach is software and hardware agnostic in the larger data sets. Moreover, we can investigate the possibility to expose and include more sensor data that are useful for fault detection. In addition, we can label the cluster that include the faults that happen frequently and using similar fault data generated by intention to verify if the algorithm can cluster similar faults. Other potential venues include exploring the performance of the algorithm on detecting the charging stations with the sensor value that tend to incur fault. To conclude, if we choose the parameter appropriately, only a small amount of healthy charging stations will be detected as fault. These false positives can be easily and quickly troubleshot by human experts. Therefore, we can conclude that the DBSCAN framework can effectively help prognosis and diagnosis by detecting faults in the EV charger system. Thanks for your attention.